Hey, it's Chris and Jodette. We're taking a break from the studio and we're headed to Binders to see our friend Howard at an incredible art store in Atlanta, Binders Art Supply. We're gonna do a couple product reviews, see what happens. You know, we're looking at the high quality art boards by Crescent. And um, here's the first thing I'm looking at in my head. Uh, there's the keyword, pH neutral. That's the magic word right there. That doesn't mean 100% acid free rag paper. If I go down to this watercolor, 100% rag. That's different. This will stay white forever. So that or immediately I've had to say, is this a family heirloom or something that I'm trying to um, hand me down? Like my mom took all the family photos and she took them and put them on posters and the board matters. So if this has acid in it, it's gonna start turning yellow. So you're looking at your price point. Am I spending a certain amount? And you can tell another way when you look at this, if you look at any mat, and this goes for a frame shop for mats or what, the mat has to be bright white or it's not acid free or, or cotton, or it's the solid color all the way through. So immediately I saw that, I knew it wasn't an archival mat. And then I started looking here for the sign. So it's really collage crafts and mounting. It's not meant to be a high-end thing you're gonna hand down as an heirloom. So that has to be 100% cotton. And that's when you're looking for different boards, but you're reading the label. And oddly enough, all of these are the same except for one in the whole pile. So that's what you're looking for. The, the papers, man, here I just said, be careful about things that are acid free. Oh, now this is something new. I've never seen this with them before. Lignin free. The lignin is the pulp in the wood that has the acid in it that starts to make it start to yellow. So I'd have to research this and see if this is, uh, has gotten a higher quality but regardless of the quality, it's still my favorite. And I use it a lot. I mean, I use Mi Tents a lot. Basically what you're doing is you're picking one color that you felt like represented everything in the room. So if I'd looked at Jodette and I saw these colors on her, so if you can come here and model for us. And I took okay. a color like this and I said, looking at her outfit, I'm on. Can I pick one color that would be in the background, be on her and be everywhere? And it sort of ties her whole thing together. That's what you're doing in a landscape. You're looking for the greens that are in a scene. You're looking for the color of something, the color that sets the mood. Think of you being on stage and, and as you're on stage, you're saying, okay, all the lights in the studio are off. And you're now telling someone to turn number one light up and they turn it up to your like it. And then someone tells someone to put the blue light on and the red light. And then you're saying, okay, we're gonna play the music at this note. Somebody has to set the stage. The paper can set the stage. And you're starting with that attitude. Now, I did talk about this in another review about this product. There is a rough side and a smooth side. I prefer the smooth side. The smooth side seems to be the back because that's why they always put the label on the back. And this is Metiens and they're our favorite colors. Okay, Ma Vanna, do you have any favorite colors that you like with the I, kids? Well, I used to use, um, I don't really anymore with the blue uh, because with the kids, because I do kids classes, the blue works out for, the, for doing certain uh, what are the things scenes, you owe oh, for winter? The winter scenes. So the psychological blue color was now. So I was looking at the color in her and you're saying psychologically it feels a certain way. Well, kids like blue and purple. So I get their colors that they like and then we work with those and I can divide that paper into sections for a certain piece that they can work on. You know what's funny and I don't want to say anything bad about a product. I never use the white. I always have trouble with the white. And that just could be me not knowing how to do it or why. And I, I put that in that field more than anything, but I love the grays and the different colors. I use them all the time. Every time I use the white, I'm frantic covering the whole paper until I've covered the whole thing. I can't start. 
but then I put pastel over the whole paper and now it's lost some of its tooth. So the more pastel you put down, the more tooth it loses, the more work time you have because eventually it's going to be so full of pastel it won't grab. So I, it's, it's interesting. There must be a certain look that people have because you don't sell five versions of white if it's not a big seller. So that has to be me. Newsprint is the lowest of the low in quality and price. It is literally for you. Gosh, what would you use it for? In college, we had these figure drawing classes and we had to have these 24 by 36 inch newsprint pads and you'd make these big strokes real fast and you need these gestural marks. And a minute later you're done, you'd rip it off and throw it on the ground and you do it. So I don't understand the smaller pads for newsprint when it's just a plane with an idea. So again, it'd be great for kids when you're wanting something very inexpensive that you're just going to throw out because they're going through 300 sheets in a day. And they do that, by the way. Um, but as it gets bigger, it tends to be a gestural idea thing. But you have to know when we talk about acid free, this is swimming in acid. I, I don't even want this in my studio next to my real paper because it emits a gas and the gas eats other things. So I'm so afraid of newsprint. But did I use it for 12 years in college? Yes. But it was always the bigger size pages.